Hi guys, welcome back. It's Professor Hank. In this video, I'm going to show you how to pass data into your C++ functions. So we'll have a coding example and we'll look at some terminology. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. All right, everyone, let's go ahead and take a look at some example functions that can have data passed into them. All right, so in order to have that, what we're going to be doing is we're going to uh, we're going to write functions that can accept arguments. All right, so we need that, and in order to do that, our functions will require parameters. All right, parameters are a special type of variable that you use to give your function some data to work with. So let's write a example function. So we'll call this function foo. All right, so all functions require four pieces. They require a return type. They require a name. They require a parameter list. And they require a body. Now, our parameter list here is empty. That's not a function that can accept arguments that can get data passed into it. In order to get data passed into the function, we need some parameters in here. So how do we create parameters? We create parameters just like we're defining any other variable. So for example, int x, all right? So int x, this is now a function that can accept an argument. Or string s, that is now a function that can accept an argument. So we can give the function a string value to work with. So we can do something like this. We can say see out. Um, hello, S. Okay, so this function now accepts a string as its only argument. All right, so let's make a little note of that. Accepts a string as its only argument. All right, because it has a single string parameter variable, all right? It has, it has a single string parameter variable. Now that we have a function that can accept an argument, we're gonna go ahead and call the function, call the function and pass it a string argument, all right? So we can do that either as a literal or we could do it as a variable, okay? So either a literal or a variable can be an argument, all right? So we'll have our function call and then for this first example, we'll just have a string literal, okay? So now if I run my function, or if I run my program, we're calling that function, and you can see there's hello, Hank. So what happened? Okay, well, what happened was, is that as soon as the foo function was called, we jumped up to line nine, started executing the foo function, but the Hank here, that string was assigned to S. It's as if you did something like this, right? So. You know, you're probably pretty comfortable with assigning values to variables. Well, that's kind of what's happening here implicitly. The Hank string is getting copied to S. And then once that's done, then this C out statement prints out hello and then the contents of the string variable. So that string parameter variable. So what was in there? Well, Hank was because of that copying that happened. So then we see the hello Hank. Now, we can do that, but we can also create a variable. String t equals Hank, right? And the variable argument does not have to have the same name as the parameter variable. Notice how this is s and this is t. They're in two completely separate scopes, right? So you don't have to have the same name, but you could have the same name if you wanted to. And I'll show that to you here right now. So there's hello, Hank. So that's 
right here, this function call, it's as if we had a little assignment statement like this, right? So we took the contents of T and assigned it to S right here. Okay. Um, but we could name the argument variable the same as the parameter variable if we wanted to, because they're in different scopes. So this variable here is getting assigned to this variable here. And so that'll work just fine too. Okay. So, you know, there are different variables. This is different than this. Okay. Now, um, another thing I want to show you is that you can have multiple parameters and multiple arguments. So let's write another version of this function of this foo function. Let's do uh, something like this. Let's say, um, int x and int y. Okay. So if we got something like that, then we could, um, add up the uh, two variables. So we could do something like this. We could say, see how X plus Y. Okay. And if we do that, when we call the function and we'll call foo. Now this is a function that accepts two integers as its only arguments. Okay. So it has two integer parameter variables, all right? So that's going to require two integer arguments. Okay. So now we're going to call the function, call foo and pass it to integer arguments. All right. So we could do something like this, a comma three. All right, so that's the syntax. You separate the um, arguments with a comma. So now if I run this, the eight will be assigned to X and the Y will be assigned, or excuse me, the three will be assigned to Y. And what do we get? Well, to go back up to the function. If eight has been assigned to X and three has been assigned to Y, eight plus three is 11. And so that's what gets sent to C out. Okay, so let me show you another example here, All right? So just do something like C out X and then Y just to prove to you, you know, what happened there. Okay. And, um, remember this is like an implicit assignment statement. So it's as if we had statements that look like this and look like this. The eight is getting copied into the X. The three is getting copied into the Y, right? And then we'll display the contents of both X and Y. Okay. So let's take a look at that. So you can see there's the eight and the three. Okay. So you can mix and match, you know, you don't have to have the same variables, right? Same data types. We could do something like this if we wanted to. Okay. And it'd be like we were assigning 3.2 to Y. You know, you can mix and match the data types in your parameter variables list all you want. Okay. Now, based off of whatever your needs are. Now, keep in mind that this is just like an implicit assignment statement, right? So when I passed eight as the first argument, that eight was assigned to the first parameter. The 3.2 was assigned to the second parameter, right? So that order does matter. Okay. For example, if I were to switch these around, you're going to notice a couple of things, right? And, uh, I'll even put this up here. So it's a little explicit X equals. Okay. And then we'll say, see out, uh, Y equals, how about that? Y equals Y equals. Okay. So now you're going to notice a couple of things. All right. Let's see if you can see it. So first things first. All right. So take a look at X, X equals three right now. Why does it say X equals three, right? Cause look at our first, our first arguments, 3.2. We signed that to X. Shouldn't we be saying 3.2? Mm -mm -mm. Why not? Because this is like an implicit assignment statement. All right. So where we're assigning 3.2 to X and eight to Y. 
Now, what data type is X? It's an int. Integers can't hold decimal places. So that uh, decimal place gets truncated. So the only thing that gets stored inside of X is the three. And so that's why you see three there. Now, if we want to preserve our decimal places, just like any other variable, a parameter is a variable, you have to have the appropriate data type. Okay, so now this will work because X is a float, which can hold decimal places. So you see 3.2 and Y is an integer, right? And we just passed an integer, so it matches. So it's no problem. We don't have any, any issues. Okay. Now, another thing that keep in mind is a common error that students will make a lot of times. Let me show you two common errors. One is that they will think that they can create parameter lists like you can when you define variables, right? So, you know, in main, it's perfectly fine to do something like that, right? So int uh, a comma b, you can declare two variables of type int, one named a, one named b in main, fine, no problem. But parameters are different, they're special, you can't do that. You have to explicitly type both of your variables, right? So int x comma y, not good, it's a syntax error. You have to include the data type for each of them, okay? Um, and then if you do that, then you can, um, you can, you can go ahead and use that function, okay? So we can do something like uh, equals two and then b equals four, and you can pass, just like with our string example, you can pass um, variables as arguments as well. So let's take a look at that. So x is equal to two, y is equal to four. Again, y, I'm gonna keep beating this to death because you know, students oftentimes struggle wrapping their heads around this. You know, this is like an assignment statement, x equals a and y equals b, where x is the parameter getting a assigned to it, and y is the parameter that's getting b assigned to it, okay? So that's a common mistake that students will make is they'll forget to put that extra data type in there. Okay, another mistake that they'll make is they'll do something like this. Okay, so you look at that A and that B being passed. This is how you do it. It's just the name of the variables. That's it. Okay, a lot of times I'll see students who will do this. Okay, they'll try to define, I don't know why, they'll try to define the variable you know, in the arguments place. You don't, that's not how it works. All you do is pass the variable name, that's it. Don't include the data types. Very, very, very common error that I see. Okay, um, so I think that that is everything that I wanted to show you in this video. Okay, so that's gonna bring this video to a close. If you're a student of mine, you have questions about any of the topics that were covered in this video, feel free to drop me an email, stop by my office hours, or hit me up on Zoom online. For the rest of you, if you thought the video was useful, please consider giving a thumbs up. If you thought the video sucked, you got the thumbs down button as well. Consider supporting the channel in various ways. You can subscribe, you can join as a member with additional perks for as little as 99 cents. Leave a comment, whatever. But most of all, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.